Namo Buddhaya, this is Sabino Kulecha, I welcome you. In this video, we will discuss about, we will continue our learnings uh, on the Dhamma, uh, Dhammapada and uh, I will uh, continue from verse 21 onwards. The earlier video uh, contains the verse 1 to 20, you can check that. Now we start from verse 21 onwards. Uh, this is from this book, The Dhammapada by Eknath Iswaran. I highly recommend this book. Right, so we start. Verse 21 says, Be vigilant and go beyond death. If you lack vigilance, you cannot escape death. Those who strive earnestly will go beyond death. Those who do not can never come to life. The wise understand this and rejoice in the wisdom of the noble ones. Meditating earnestly and striving for nirvana, they attain the highest joy and freedom. So here, uh, Buddha talks about the importance of being vigilant, importance of being mindful in our life. Be vigilant and go beyond death because if we are not vigilant, if we are not careful in our conduct, in our speech, in our actions, then death, death is what suffering, suffering will continue in our life, in this life, in future lifetimes, right? So if we want to escape death, what Buddha's point of view is, if you want to escape the pain, the suffering, then be vigilant. Meditating, Buddha has given a lot of importance on meditation, mind training, which is the uh, the noble eightfold path. Also, if you say if you see the right effort and the right mindfulness and the right concentration, they all fall under the category of mental development. Buddha placed a lot of emphasis on mental development. Why? Because through only through mental development can the mind become one pointed and concentrated so that it can get insight, insight, which is Hindi, in Hindi it is called Vipassana. And that insight only has a potential to free a person from this cycle of birth and death. So for getting that insight, the mind has, the scattered mind has to be made one pointed. And for doing that, we have the way that the Buddha has suggested, which is meditation. I have made a separate video on insight meditation, Vipassana meditation, how you can practice it. You can check that video to get a basic idea on how you can start your insight meditation practice in line with what Buddha has suggested. So that is verse 21, be, be vigilant, right? Verse number, that is verse 21, 22, 23. Actually, it's a, the entire para comprises of these three verses, right? They are all as one para. Then we come to verse 24 and 25. It says, if you meditate earnestly, pure in mind and kind in deeds, leading a disciplined life in harmony with the dharma, you will glow, grow in glory. If you meditate earnestly through spiritual disciplines, you can make an island for yourself that no flood can overwhelm. Beautiful. So Buddha said that uh, there is a flood around you. This is actually his last teaching also. He said this thing, be a refuge unto yourself, right? Uh, Buddha said that they, if, if in, even in a flood, you can create an island. If you meditate earnestly, if you are pure in mind and you, you are kind in deeds, pure in mind and kind in action, in deeds, leading a disciplined life in harmony with the dharma, right? Following the dharma, then you will grow in glory and you'll create an island for yourself that no. So we all have to create an island for us. So see, the thing is, what my reflection is, I'm just sharing things from my limited understanding is that there are things outside of us which which we cannot, you know, control, uh, uh, you know, beyond a point. But we can control our own state of mind. So we have to just create an island for peace for ourselves, right? And if we are peaceful, then outer things also get helped from us and peace can get created, right? Our aura should be that, that we are first in peace and our peace then helps others and help them become peaceful. So for doing that, meditation, purity of mind and leading a life in accordance with dharma is what Buddha suggested. Then we come to verse 26 and 27. Uh, Buddha says, The immature lose their vigilance, but the wise guard it as their greatest treasure. Do not fall into the ways of sloth and lust. Those who meditate earnestly attain the highest happiness. Again, Buddha talks about the importance of being vigilant and how we need to avoid sloth and lust and be mature, guard our... So, what is the most important thing for us is our mindfulness, our, our vigilance. And which is, again, if you even see the Noble Eightfold Path, the, the if you just pick up the right mindfulness and practice right mindfulness, you will be able to ensure 
all the other things in that path. So what Thai says, Thik Nhat Han, the Buddhist monk says, is that mindfulness is the most fundamental precept. When you follow mindfulness, then everything, all the other precepts, so you have five precepts, no drinking, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, no lying, right? These precepts. So Buddha said is, and no killing. So Buddha said, if you follow, if you are totally mindful, then you, are in, you will ensure all the other things also will happen. So Buddha said, okay, if you want to drink a glass of alcohol, it's it's not good for you, not good for your body, right? Even if you want to drink it, drink it with full mindfulness. If you do that, maybe one, two, three times, five times, ten times, you will drink in full mindfulness and then you will leave it, right? So this is why mindfulness or vigilance is very, very important on this path. Worth, uh, verse number 28, overcoming sloth through earnestness, the wise climb beyond suffering to the peaks of wisdom. They look upon the suffering multitude as one. They look upon suf the suffering multitude as one from a mountain top look on the plains below. Like Buddha says, give the example of person who has climbed the mountain top and who, who then looks back at the plains. So in our life right now, we have there is full of suffering. We are engaged in suffering and we are trying to practice our dharma. And we need to practice the dharma and be do our meditation and do the spiritual practices. And there will be a point at, at in our life where we will reach that mountain top. And then we will be able to look back at our suffering in the days that you know our practice was not so deep and our suffering was there. And then we can be we can we can be we, we can become a witness to our suffering that we have undergone. Right. Then uh, verse number 29 30. 31 is basically on the importance of earnestness. Earnestness, earnest among those who are indolent, indolent means, means lazy. Earnest among those who are lazy, awake amongst those who slumber, the wise advance like a race horse, leaving others behind. It was through the earnest effort that Indra became the lord of the gods. The earnest are always respected, the indolent never. So our importance of earnestness, right effort, which is part of the Noble Eightfold Path, making the right effort. Right? That is important. The earnest spiritual aspirant, fearing sloth, advances like a fire, burning all fetters. Fetters are like chains. Such seekers will never fall back. They are nearing nirvana. So encouraging. Right? So what we need as you know, on the spiritual path as seekers is just some encouragement that when we are following our practice, uh, we want to achieve nirvana, freedom from birth and death, the cycle of suffering. So our earnestness is very, very important in this. Our eagerness, our diligence, our sincerity. So Buddha spoke about this. Then we come to verse number 33. Now here Buddha gives the analogy of an archer. As an archer aims an arrow, the wise aim their restless thoughts, hard to aim, hard to restrain. So again, this is verse is on mind training. How? Buddha says that we need to achieve at that level where we can be so skillful that we can direct our thoughts in a particular direction like an irrigator who channels the water in the in the fields they they create those you know channels where the water can be so we need to our mind should be so trained that we should be able to consciously channel our thoughts in the right direction like go back to the verse 1 of uh, when we read uh, the verse one that it, that if the evil thought is there then the suffering will follow like a wheel follows the oxen of the cart and if the positive if you think about the positive thoughts then joy will never leave you like a shadow never leaves a person so we need to be our mind need to be so so you know trained that it we can consciously direct it into the direction of the positive thoughts right so here Buddha says, like an archer aims at an arrow, the wise aim at their restless thoughts, which are hard to aim and hard to restrain. So, verse number 34, as a fish hooked and left on the sand thrashes about in agony, mind being trained in meditation trembles all over, desperate to escape in the hands of the Mara. So here basically Buddha says is that till now we are all in the grasp of the Mara, right? All the Mara is what? Mara is the personification of all the negative tendencies that I that we have hate anger desire and then we, when we sit for meditation when we truly adapt the path of the dharma and we sit in the meditation and we start our practice then the mind trembles right because the mind is not yet stable right the 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 
basically the, all the tendencies as a fish hooked and left on the sand thrashes about in agony this is how our mind so that's why initially when we start doing the meditation it becomes it is very very difficult for the person to sit but with diligence with effort and most importantly with determination if you decide that, okay 10 minutes every day i will sit for my meditation then slowly 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 the mind gets trained right the mind the energy the mind gets trained that okay i have to sit and i have to meditate but that determination we have to keep in the initial stages it is very very important right verse 35 says hard it is to train the mind which goes where it likes and does what it wants but a trained mind bring health and happiness the wise can direct their thoughts subtle and elusive wherever they choose a trained mind brings health and happiness right so very buddha acknowledges this fact that it is difficult to train the mind which is which which it, the natural tendency of the mind is to go here and there and getting stuck in lot of places so again but the wise those who have trained the mind they are able to direct the thoughts subtle and elusive wherever they choose and that those thoughts then brings the health happiness and joy to them right verse number 37 those who are who can direct the thoughts which are unsubstantial and wander so aimlessly are free from the bonds of mara so if we are able to if we get into that ability to be able to consciously guide our thoughts in the right direction guide our thoughts to the higher virtues like love compassion kindness giving service then we will be able to get free from the bonds of the mara right so only we have to be pay very close attention be vigilant to where our thoughts are going and be able to direct them to the to where we desire them to go right okay verse 37 38 they are not wise whose thoughts are not steady and minds not serene who do not know the dharma the law of life they are wise whose thoughts are steady and minds serene unaffected by good and bad they are awake and free from fear so buddha says about the importance of keeping the thoughts steady mind steady following the dharma hai right? verse 40 which is the last verse that we will discuss in this video uh, right okay so it says remember this body is like a fragile clay pot make your mind a fortress and conquer mara with the weapon of wisdom guard your conquest always remember that this body will soon lie in the earth without life without value useless as a burned log how how deep it is see body is what body is a vehicle for us to achieve liberation in this life so this body that we have is fragile see never attach yourself to this body do not have any attachment towards this body right be just mindful of this body and how it is decaying how with time it is uh, it is going from good to bad to worse right we we are all aging which is one of the five remembrances that i am of the of the i i will have old age and i will die one day right so we need to keep that awareness but in this body we have the ability to sharpen and train our mind this body will leave one day but our mind we need to make our mind a fortress a fortress is like enemies cannot enter so all the lust all the sexual pleasures sense pleasures they are all enemies but if our mind is well trained it's like go back to the earlier verses of dhammapada where buddha says like a well thatched passion can only enter a mind which is a ill thatched hut passions cannot enter the mind which is a well thatched hut so we need to train our mind so much that it is like a fortress no negative thoughts negative passions can enter and take control over us mara cannot take control over us if our mind is strong so we need to make our mind strong and also buddha actually what what i will what my inference is that buddha tries to say in this verse is that this it's it's just a matter of time when we are going to die we are all going to die it's a truth nobody leaves this planet with undead right so uh, alive so we have less time on our hands we don't have the forever the eternity one day fine day this body will die everything then we should not have the regret that we should did not do our spiritual practices 
because once the body is dead the mind is now you know mind gets you know separated from the body then the mind we cannot do our spiritual practice in the way that we can do right now so we need to recognize the urgency of of attaining our goal and in this body we are so fortunate to have a body where we can practice we can hear the dharma right and follow the dharma of our teacher given by our teacher buddha right because one day the body will be useless like a bone log right so this was chap this was verses 21 to 40 i hope you are finding some value in this discussion and do please share your comments your thoughts your feedback we are all a sangha a spiritual community right so let's share our views uh, in the next video uh, i will continue from verse 41 onwards uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo buddhaye